Live now at Casino Rama, Steve Molitor, the latest chapter in his Odyssey tonight. Rumble at Rama 5 against Argentina's Seferino Labarda. And hi, everybody. I'm Rod Black, and welcome to Rumble at Rama 5. Tonight, a South American challenger comes to Molitor House. Casino Rama has become his place, his fifth defense in his last 14 months, and this is the most important one of all. The big one before the next big one. With a win tonight, he virtually assures himself of a shot at the WBA champion, Celestino Caballeros. But he has to get things done here first tonight. With more on that, let's send you ringside to Joe Bowen and Russ Anber. Well, thank you very much, Rod. There's no question that in the football world, you would think of this game as maybe the trap game. Is that what's going to happen tonight? Well, it might. And I think that the important thing is that Molitor doesn't look ahead, stays focused on this fight. But there's no doubt about it that what he wants to do is aim for bigger fish. And that bigger fish is Celestino Caballero. This fight, I expect Molitor to come out and prove that he is among the elite in the world and that he is ready to unify the world crown. Well, there is no question that he is ready as we get another look at Steve Molitor in the locker room. He's in tremendous shape and he is very motivated. Yeah, for sure he's motivated. There's no doubt about it. I mean, here he is making his fifth title defense. I mean, he's been a fighting champion. He's come here. He's performed. He hasn't ducked anybody. Everybody they've put in front of him, he has fought. And he's looking for bigger things. And I definitely think that the guy he wants is Caballero. And this fight with Labarda, the important thing is, Labarda is coming in here and he's stepping up. I mean, he's taking on the champion of the world. This is without a doubt the best guy Labarda's ever going to meet. So this was this is a great opportunity for Mahler. And he has to to show that he's the champion. Both are left-handers. Both are southpaws. What kind of a fight can we expect? Well, I think that Molitor has proven that he hasn't had any difficulty with southpaws, except for that little flash knockdown against 3K Battery. He's handled the southpaws very well. He's comfortable with it, so I don't see that being a factor at all. I think now he's going to come out, maybe show some new moves with his new trainer, Stefan LaRouche, so that's going to be an important thing to see the adaptation that he has made with LaRouche, and I think all this is to get ready for Celestino Caballero in November, Joe. We're ready. The crowd at Ram is ready, Rod. Yes, they are, Joe Bowen. The Argentine's first pro fight out of his country in Molitor House tonight. Steve Molitor defends his title when we come back. Rumble at Rama 5, brought to you by Orion Sports Management. This is Steve Molitor, IBF Junior Featherweight Champion of the World. I'm dedicating this fight to the troops overseas. Good luck, guys. Stay safe. You're in my prayers. We are back live. Casino Rama, Steve Molitor's message to the troops. His message tonight, an impressive win over his Argentine challenger and an impending unification bout on the horizon the fighters ready to go let's go ringside once again joe bowen and russ anber thank you very much rod and here is the challenger entering the ring seferino dario lafarda 27 years of age joined by his trainer carlos tello senior and carlos tello jr it is the biggest night of his boxing life, there is no question about that. Absolutely, and he's coming into the ring as a solid underdog. Not only is he coming into the hometown and the home...
adaptation period, but we'll get a look, and I don't think it's really going to be a factor as to the adjustment that Molitor is going to have to make. Three world title holders there pushing each other. That's right. Bute, Diakonu, and Molitor. Let's go to James Jardine. Scheduled for 12 rounds for the IBF Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. This contest is sanctioned by the Ontario Athletic Commission as also sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. Doctors at ringside are Dr. Jason Sue and Dr. Alistair Murray. The timekeeper is Willem Mackey, and counting the knockdowns is Dave Paulette. Judges for this world title fight are from Union, New Jersey, Mr. Larry Hazard, Jr. From Janesville, Wisconsin, Mr. Mike Fitzgerald, and from Toronto, Mr. Alan Davis. And when the action starts, the referee from New York State, Mr. Charlie Fitz. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our packed house here at Casino Rama, for our viewers on TSN, coast to coast, and especially for the brave men and women watching in on the Canadian Armed Forces Television Network. Introducing the principals, on my right and in the blue corner, he is wearing the silver and with tr silver with blue trim, and went in this morning at 121 and one half pounds. His professional record, a perfect 18 fights, 18 wins, with seven knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, from Cordoba, Argentina, introducing the challenger, Seferino Dario Lombarda. And his opponent across the ring, on my left and in the red corner. He is wearing the red with silver trim. Went in this morning at already 121 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, also a perfect 27 wins. No losses, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. He is undefeated, the reigning and defending IBF Junior Featherweight Champion of the World. Canadian kid, Steve Molitor. 12 rounds, world title. Good evening, gentlemen. This fight is 12 rounds, IBF Junior Featherweight World Championship. You both know the rules. 
Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch goes now. Come on, fighting at the bell. Everything is ready to go. Steve Molitor defending his title for the fifth time. And Seferino Labarda trying to win the lottery. And here's the tale of the tape. Even height at five foot seven apiece, but I think the key in this is look at number of rounds boxed. 202 for Molitor, 71 for Labarda. Here we go. And Labarda quickly out of the shoot, trying to be the aggressor here in round number one. He's in a casino, he's rolling the dice. And he hopes to be able to walk away almost as a lottery winner here. And Molitor, as is his usual manner, study, explore, learn, and see what the opponent has before he shows his cards. Both fighters appear to be in excellent shape, and you know that Steve Molitor is from his work in Montreal with Stefan LaRouche. Labarda with the silver trunks and the teal trim. Maybe the longest pair of boxing trunks I've ever seen. <laughs> Almost pants. <laughs> yeah. With a tie with them, you can take them out. Wild hook there by Labarda misses. A combination by Molitor to score midway through round one. If I'm Molitor right now, I'm feeling really good that this guy wants to come at me and keep throwing a lot of shots this early in the fight. It's 12 rounds, and 12 rounds is a long time. If he, if, if he wants to get confident, that's perfect. Let him come, and I'm going to time him, and he's going to walk into a left hand or a right hook, but I'll let him get confident first. Bit of a feeling out process here for Steve Molitor as Labarda continues to press the attack. Molitor keeping him away with the right jab. Overhand right misses by Molitor and now Labarda back to the middle of the ring. Molitor sees everything coming. He's got the hands up nice and high. When he wants to move to his right, he moves to his right. When he wants to step back over to the left, he does, and he picks everything off that Labarda throws. The translator at the press conference suggested Labarda had an illusion of winning, and Steve Molitor quickly said that's what it'll be, an illusion. <laughs> I think it may have been more in the translation that got misconstrued from the Labarda camp. Barta continuing to press the attack. Less than 10 seconds in the round. The opening round of 12 for the WBA or the IBF Junior Featherweight Championship and a chance to meet Celestino Caballero as far as Molitor is concerned. And a feeling out process for the first round. Let's see if we can get a listen. Can't really hear what LaRouche is saying to him, but you know that that was exactly their plan to come out, just move, let's see what this guy has got, and probably gave away the first round just for inactivity, just by inactivity. An opportunity here, too, in their first fight together to learn one another, and LaRouche has to learn what buttons to push and everything else as they go through this. Absolutely, but I think a lot of the learning with that joke gets done in, in the gym. That's where really you bring it here. That's what the preparation is all about, and preparation is the key. So if they learned anything, it's been in the gym, and not so much here on a first-time basis. So here we go with round two. Although the tail of the tape said both guys are at 5'7", at a quick glance, it looks that like Molitor does have a decided height advantage. 
and it's difficult to tell in terms of the leg size of, of, of Labarda because his shorts are so long and baggy. Difficult to tell if he carries a lot of weight in his legs if he's got those stocky legs. Labarda, a crunched over style, and Molitor standing upright a lot more as he counters the attacking Labarda with a couple of straight right hands. Both are southpaws. This is the third time of the five defenses for Molitor that he has fought a southpaw. So there's plenty of experience in that department. And usually, like I've said to you before, southpaws hate southpaws. But Molitor seems to have adapted beautifully to fighting them. He feels comfortable with landing his shots against them. And most importantly, he feels comfortable defensively against them. Both fighters really feeling the pace here a little bit, feeling each other out. There's a bit of a flurry from Steve Molitor that got the crowd into it. Overhand left at miss. And Molitor is so strong physically that now he can settle down a little bit. He doesn't need to be moving for no reason. Just move when you have to. And if you need to move an inch, you move an inch. You don't move two. And then start putting uh, Labarda on his heels a little bit. Like with shots like that. Strong left hook there to the side of Labarda. Minute to go in the round, round two. Labarda with a wild left hook and a bit of a smile on his face after delivering it. Steve Molitor today at the weigh in, very relaxed, and it was really quite a, a difference from previous weigh-ins that we'd seen him where he seemed to be a lot more tense and we'll see how that translates into his fighting style here tonight there's where Molitor tried the sharp one two with the left hand over the top which just fell short Labarda throwing a left hook that just missed There's Strong a good left, left hook. Hand. Yep. And there is the end of round two. Steve Molitor and uh, Seferino Labarda in round two action. There was that right hook that Molitor landed, and he's going to want to land more shots like that to keep Labarda honest. Here we are in round three. Scheduled for 12, IBF Junior Featherweight title out on the line, being defended by Steve Molitor for the fifth time. Labarda with a good looping right hand there that scored. Trying to follow it up with a combination in against the ropes. Molitor is so slick and so smooth. the challenger back. Good little short hook by Molitor. Molitor can afford to be moving this guy back. He's the bigger guy, he's the stronger guy. He's getting much better at infighting. A massive improvement since he's been champion. His ability to fight on the inside. And if there is a knock, it is that he's not been able to finish opponents. Takalani and Ngovu was the only one that he stopped of his title defenses. But he has dominated everybody he's fought, though. And I'm sure that he would like to add a notch to that belt in this, this department against his challenger here tonight in Labarda. Especially with what looms on the horizon for him. Juan Manuel Lopez is the WBO champion. Israeli Vasquez, the WBC champion at this weight. But it is Celestino Caballero, the WBA champion, that uh, Molitor would love to have here probably in November. But this is the boat that has to be completed first, and it has to be done professionally. And uh, as far as Steve Molitor is concerned, hopefully with a dramatic finish. And Molitor landed a beautiful left hand 
that caught Labarda coming in. Molitor has been the defender and uh, counter punching as Labarda has uh, carried the fight to the champion here in the first three rounds of this fight. Good combination there from Steve Molitor. Molitor needs to work a little bit more to the body and slow this guy down a little bit. As a southpaw, he can get that left hand under the liver right yeah, there. Right there, yep, right under the gloves. Under 10 seconds in the round. Punch that landed there on Labarda and then a grazing blow at the end of the round. Three in the books. Back here at a sold-out Casino Rama as we take a look at uh, Russ Amber's unofficial scorecard. Of course. After three in the books. Does yours differ from mine, Joe? No, I don't think oh, okay. so. I think the first round, uh, I agreed that uh, Molitor kind of sat back a little bit and studied and learned. Uh, he has picked that tempo up. Labarda has been the aggressor and Molitor has been the counterpuncher. There's the good shot underneath. That's the one that I was saying he should be throwing more often. He should be getting in those body shots a little bit more on Labarda. Start breaking him down a little bit. You always want to throw those shots. They're investment shots. They pay off in the future. They pay off in, later in the fight. And Molitor throws the punches textbook, with textbook perfection. Good. Good spearing jab and then jump on him again with a nice three punch combination and get that little bounce working like he's doing there. Missed him with the left hook following it up on that occasion, but now presses the attack. Labarda with an uppercut. Because of the quality of punches that Molitor throws, if Molitor sets a fast pace in the over the stretch of the fight, Labarda will not be able to keep up because the quality of punches from Molitor are just too sharp. A couple of body blows there from Labarda. Molitor saw everyone coming, he picked everyone off. And the thing is, Molitor doesn't need to let Labarda just be banging away at his arms for, for no reason. Molitor should be coming back with three, four shots at a time, should be exploding with his speed, should be getting a second attack going on this guy. And then explode. Bang, 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 bang. Good quick shots. Crowd imploring Steve Molitor to get a little busier. Forty seconds left in the round. Scheduled for 12 here at Casino Rama. There's the combination, some combination punching from Molitor, and that's what he's got to do. Just put those combinations together. Labarda swinging him around from the corner. Referee Charlie Fitch of New York, the third man in the ring. Molitor should let his hands go quick and fast, explode, be dynamic with his shots, bounce in and out. Ten seconds left in the round. Couple of grazing blows at the end. Fourth round done here at Casino Rama. To the principles and practices, write us at PO Box 9, Station O, Toronto, Ontario, M482M9. CFL on TSN continues Sunday as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers travel to Saskatchewan to take on the Rough Riders and their new quarterback, Michael Bishop. Live coverage begins at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific, available in TSN HD. Steve Molitor and Seferino Labarda into round five of a 12-round IBF junior featherweight title defense by the Canadian kid. Yeah. 
Mahler's got to be careful of not looking for that one shot at a time. He's got such outstanding hand speed, and he's so graceful on his feet that he's the kind of guy who can put two and three shots together at the same time. There they are. You there they are. Put, there put my again. hand there. Double shot. And then he should do it again. He bounced back out. He should bounce right back in with another attack. Labarda withstood it. Labarda's a tough kid. He will withstand it, but you just have to keep doing it and chip away and chip away, and eventually the wall crumbles. And it's gone in round five. Break! The break! Referee Fitch getting them apart. Uppercut there, landed by Molitor. And then he should do it again before Labarda, who tried to counterattack right away. You catch him in the middle of that counterattack, and he walks into something, and it, and it has double the impact. Coming and going. Right, left hook there by Molitor. Trying to follow it up. He may sense he has him in a little trouble here. This is where he can let his hands go in explosive fashion. He doesn't need to be looking for one shot. He needs to be doing overwhelming punches with speed and explosion. Just like that. And then he does it again. Molitor's corner is imploring him to use the uppercut here. Labarda misses with a wild left. Right now, it, it's not really a question of what punches Molitor uses, more of a question of how many he uses at one time. And that's the key, I think, if he's gonna dominate this kid and show that he's got outstanding hand speed like he showed right there in throwing combination. Now he's got him backed up against the ropes, and Labarda looks like he may be in a little trouble. He is, and, and, and he's breaking him down by throwing combinations. Molitor looking very fresh, and Labarda a little haggard here in round five. Good combination there from the Canadian kid. Now he should start putting three There's together. another good left hook. Now he should finish with the right hook. Should be one, two, and then three with the right hook. Seconds left in the round as Labarda pushes Molitor in against the ropes. And the bell will end the round five. Rumble at Rama 5, brought to you by Orion Sports Management. This Pretty good combinations here from Steve Molitor. This is what I'm telling you about the hand speed and the combinations. That's what he needs to be throwing is combination punches. Put two and three together at a time, and you'll break Labarda down. Round six. little bounce going he should use that to his advantage bounce in bounce out throw shots bounce back come back in bouncing in throwing punches he's so graceful on his feet he can do it and he can use combinations as well right in the in the middle of that using his gloves to block the jabbing effect of Labarda here a while left does not land good straight right hand by Molitor did Molitor anticipating already what's coming from Labarda as he puts himself in a position to block the punches before it's even there. Another hard hook. That stuns Labarda again. This is where, again, Molitor should be looking to unleash speed more than power. Wild right by Labarda. Molitor trying to follow things up here. Good right hand. There's the combination. And then follow it up with the hook after that. Get on that second attack. Start picking up this pace of breaking this guy down. If he's there to be hit with two, you can hit him with three. If you hit him with three, you can hit him with four. 
Hook lands there. Now, now he should jump on him again there, and then jump on him again there. Wild left hook by Labarda was handled easily by Molitor. Now Molitor with a combination that was blocked by the challenger. Spearing jab from Labarda. Under a half minute to go in the round. Uppercut there, and that's what they've been imploring from the corner. Good overhand right. Seconds remain in the round. Now Molitor should come off of there with a flurry of punches. And there is the end of the round, halfway through the title defense. Joe Bowen and Russ Amber along with Rod Black back here at Casino Rama where Steve Molitor is into his fifth title defense here against Seferino Labarda. And there's a good, a good left hand that Molitor landed. And he's just got to keep putting those punches together. He's just got to keep throwing combinations. That's going to be the key to put the shots together instead of loading up one at a time. He's had Labarda in a little trouble in the fourth round. Or maybe, it, I guess it was more the third round where he had him staggered up against the ropes a bit. But there really hasn't been a decisive blow from either fighter at this point. And he's landed, he's landed some great shots. Labarda, credit to him for taking them because Molitor has landed some clean shots. But... Labarda's not going to go with one shot, and Molitor's going to have to put them together to hurt this guy. Good body shot underneath. Left hand over the top. Now, this is where the flurry of punches should come. This is where he should let the flurry of shots go on that second attack and overwhelm Labarda before Labarda can get into his defensive position. Good straight right hand there. Followed by a left hook. Overhand left from Labarda misses. Molitor's breaking him down slowly. But there's a lot of opportunities presenting themselves for Molitor to explode with shots like that. And do it again with shots right like hand. that. Yep. There it is. Labarda has uh, been the aggressor. Molitor, there's a good left hand by Labarda. But a young man who has uh, boxed 71 professional rounds in against someone who's been in for over 200 professional rounds is giving away a wealth of experience. Molitor's got him on the ropes. Open up here. Let your hands go. Vary the attack between the body and the head. Instead of just looking for the one shot, Molitor should be exploding with this guy. There's the flurry of left hook. Now nice. that hurt him. Labarda was stunned there. There was a cross of heads. Yes, he's cut. There's a cut to the right of the right eye, and it is bleeding a lot. Now here's Molitor trying to follow it up. There was a clash of heads. Labarda turned to complain to the referee. Difficult to see if the ref is going, let's see if the ref is going to call it a headbutt, an accidental headbutt at the end of the round. And Labarda is pointing to his head. We'll be back. Some controversy here in this round. A headbutt by Steve Molitor, or was it the punch? I think the referee has noted there was the headbutt. You see the clash. You see the clash of heads. 
you saw the clash of heads, so the referee has notified the, the commission and the judges that there was a clash of heads, which is quite important, although Molitor is way ahead in the fight so far. In the, in the event that the fight is stopped as a result of the cut being caused by an accidental headbutt, they would go to the scorecards. The corner did a quick job on that cut during the time between rounds, and Labarda is back in there. There's the hook counter from Molitor. Good shot again underneath. The Argentine ch challenger with an uppercut that misses. Molitor with a left hook that landed. Overhand right by Molitor. He can do it again. He can set up the attack again. And the crowd, like you, is imploring him to follow it up. Technically, he's boxing a perfect fight. I mean, he's doing everything right. The movement is right. The punches he's throwing is right. You just get the sense he's not that following he's, up on the advantage. Yeah, and he's so much, so so much more skilled than Labarda, you feel he can take advantage of the weaknesses much more. Round eight. Under a minute to go in it. Molitor winning on the unofficial Russ Amber scorecard. I think the unofficial Russ Amber scorecard is going to be pretty darn close, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> it's been Molitor all the way through. I mean, he's just been technically perfect. He's really controlled the fight. And in the first round, it was more a case of him giving away that round than Labarda really winning it. Come under there, But now it's time in the second half of the fight to shift gears and show that you're gonna go in there and take the title from Caballero in a couple of months' time. It was the ninth round that Molitor last KO'd an opponent. And the eighth round is completed. TSN's live coverage of U.S. Open Tennis continues tomorrow morning on TSN at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, and tomorrow night on TSN 2 starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. For more information on TSN 2, contact your local television provider or visit tsn2.ca. Round 9. And... Uh, Molitor's corner and instructing their fighter more combinations. Exactly what you've been saying and following it up. And again, the challenger is complaining about a headbutt. At the end of the last round, referee Charlie Fitch came over to our table to confirm that he did indeed notify the judges that the cut was caused by an accidental headbutt. Although I don't think it's going to be a factor in the fight, the corner of Labarda has done a good job in closing the, the cut and stopping the bleeding, but he did call it an accidental headbutt. Hugo Gomez has been doing that in the corner. Carlos Tello Sr. is the trainer and his son is his second. Molitor picking up the pace here a little bit in round nine. This is where he's going to now. This is where he should get that bounce in his feet and explode with combination shots and bounce away from the counter punches. He's got Laparta a little bit on the run here. 
but still has not delivered a blow that has shaken the Argentine. It won't be a, a punch, one particular punch. It's going to be an accumulation and an explosion of punches in which Labarda tries to react to one of them but doesn't pick the right time and Molitor catches him while Labarda's trying to counter. Right above our vantage point now. Here at ringside at Casino Rama. The cut has really not been affected, but that was that a good left hand. He heard it, and another right that follows it up. This is where he should explode. Come along. This is where the explosion should come now. The crowd imploring him to move on, and Molitor following it up with a left and a left hook, right, and another left that grazes the head of the challenger. Right hand that followed through. Another good combination. The flurry on here again. to his corner, saying he's all right, but a knockdown of the challenger in round nine. He's looking, he's, he's hurt, he's looking to his corner. He tried to tell them that he's hurt. Molitor trying to finish him off. Left hook to finish the round as the bell goes. The crowd at Casino Ram on its face as Steve Molitor has a decisive ninth round. Well, you called it. You said the last time he had a knockout was the ninth round, and he certainly opened it up here, but the key has been the accumulation of punches and catching Labarda in the middle of his punches, and that's exactly how Molitor heard him. That was the knockdown. This was the end after he had already had him hurt here. Right there, he already had him hurt, and this was now was just an accumulation of punches as Labarda crumbles under the assault of Steve Molitor. Combination punching was the key here, and combination punching will be the key to ending the fight. Seconds out. Getting set for round 10. Labarda back into the fight. And Steve Molitor with a huge ninth round. And Molitor feels good. He feels like he's got, he's got this fight and he's got his man where he wants him. Now it's just a question of stopping him in his tracks for just a long enough time to unleash the final assault. Wild right hand by the challenger. Molitor measuring him here now almost. The nose bleeding from a Labarda. Monitor going downstairs a little bit, trying to open up. An attack on the challenger's head. Overhand left by Molitor, straight right hand and a good jab. Molitor's putting a lot of pressure on Labarda now. Uppercut lands, and now he has him up against the ropes again. Right hand lands. Right hook, that's a hard hook. Right hand. He's got him in trouble again. Molitor trying to finish it off. The challenger backing up Molitor. Cut again. Like I said before, it's not the punch, it's how many punches. Molitor's hurting him with the single shot. Now you gotta finish him with the combination. Minute and 19 seconds to go in the round. Plenty of time here, and Labarda's on his bicycle. He's hurt him there. Now he's hurt him to the body. Now he's got him again. Labarda up against the ropes. Uppercut lands. The corner is imploring Molitor to press on and finish this. Molitor, a right hand. Labarda hanging on here. And a lot of time to go in the round. The uppercut. The referee's watching closely, John.
his IBF junior featherweight title with a stoppage of Seferino Labarda. It was technically perfect. It was technically perfect, Joe. Alan Cromley in the ring with his fighter. You're right, but it was the flurry. It was the flurry of punches, and the corner had been calling for it, and you could see the vulnerability of Labarda when Molitor would unleash with both hands. He was able to handle the one shot at a time for the better part of the fight, but the more and more Molitor started putting those shots together, the more he was able to get to him and break him down. And finally, there was just no defense. Just too much. Now, he had broken him down by this point. Labarda showing all the heart he possibly could to stay in there. For a kid with 71 professional rounds experience, you got to give him credit for the heart he showed against a fighter with the class of a Steve Molitor. But in the end, it was just too much as Molitor over overwhelms Labarda. And so is Celestino Caballero next on the horizon. Well, well, there's no doubt about it that that's the one he wants because that's the fight that will lead to the other big money fights. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it's great fighting here at Casino Rama. This is his fifth successful title defense. No world champion has been busier than Steve Molitor, but Steve Molitor wants to also make a name for himself worldwide. And to do that, you're gonna have to beat the other world champions. So a big night for Steve Molitor. Let's go to James Jardine. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes, 34 seconds of the 10th round. Referee calls a halt to the action. The winner by tactical knockout and still undefeated. The IBF Junior Featherweight Champion of the World, the Canadian Kid. The belt is still around, the Canadian kid and the IBF junior featherweight champion. As Steve Molitor comes over to congratulate a game, Seferino Labarda. And Labarda was game, there's no doubt about that. Molitor showing him the respect because he's proved just how tough he was because he took some tough shots from from Molitor and hung in there, but in the end, like I said, the class of Molitor and the technical perfection was just too much for uh, for Labarda. So let's go to Rod Black up in the ring. Here he is uh, once again, champ. Uh, usually the last few fights, you've gone through a marathon and, and you look a little spent. You look as fresh as you did at the beginning of the fight. By far your most explosive win in quite some time. What can I say? You know, my hat go off to Stefan LaRouche. All the guys got me ready. You know, there's a lot of skeptics out there saying, you know, to change the world, uh, uh, a trainer this close to a fight is not a good thing. It proved beneficial. I'm the happiest man on the planet. I got a man who wants to work as hard as I do in Stefan LaRouche. I was listening in the quarter to Stefan, and you might as well come in as well, like talking about pop, 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 even asking for the Boutte special at one time. Lucien Boutte is here as well. What's it like to work with Steve Molitor? Honestly, it's a charm. He's a... Uh... He's just such a fan of boxing. He dreams about it, he talks about it. He just lives for boxing. So it's an honor for me to be with him and I think we're having a lot of fun together. Sham, 28 and 0, you have this belt. You'd like another one down the road. Without a doubt, you know, we got our sights set on Celestino Caballero. I didn't want to talk about it before this fight. I want to take care of business here tonight. But now that it's on, let's rock and roll November 21st. Safe to say you took care of business here. Alan Tremblay, a promoter of uh, Steve Molitor. What happens now? Will this fight take place, and will it take place here at Casino Rama? Well, there has to be, uh, there's a two-part scenario to this. I'll, I'll be in Panama City on September the 18th, and Caballero defends his title. I have a contract in my pocket. The deal's done. He wins. We sign. We're here on November 21st. Can't wait for that. Champ, final word to you. 
I'd like to thank all my fans here at Casino Rama, throughout Ontario, everybody in Montreal who treated me so good throughout my training camp, my family, my beautiful fiance, we got a baby boy on the way, my brother Jeremy. I love everybody. Thank you very much. Life is good, isn't it? It's great. Steve Molitor, still the IBF Junior Featherweight Champion, still undefeated. An explosive win tonight. Didn't go the distance as he takes out his Argentine challenger for Joe Bowen, Russ Amber. This is Rod Black. Good night, everybody, from Casino Rama. We will see you November 21st for a unification bout against Celestino Caballeros. Sports Center is next.